Hello everyone! Do you know why certain foods seem disgusting to you, while others are delicious? Or, for example, that your taste preferences are directly linked to your genes? Today we'll discuss these and other food-related facts. Get comfortable, enjoy the discussion, and for those eating, bon appetit! You might think that our upbringing, as well as our cultural and domestic environment, influences our food preferences. Indeed, to some extent, it does have an undeniable impact on shaping our taste. For instance, a person from India might find European food unfamiliar and tasteless, and vice versa. What is that? What the f is that? However, it's not only about our surroundings and culture, it's more complex. Scientists have discovered that our gastronomic preferences are directly influenced by our genes. <laughs> Let's delve into the role of genetic code in human taste perception and why it happens. In general, taste and its companion smell are considered the oldest senses emerging approximately a billion years ago in the earliest cellular organisms. Taste receptors initiated the process of evolution becoming a crucial survival mechanism in the harsh wilderness. Now I'm really mad! Taste and smell helped animals sense approaching prey or threats and discern which plants were edible or poisonous. For example, a sweet taste often indicates edible fruits, while bitterness suggests inedibility and, in some cases, toxicity. The same applies to smell. Fresh meat is nearly odorless, signaling it's safe to eat, while spoiled meat is easily detected. This evolutionary role of taste and smell continued in the evolution of animals and, subsequently, humans. After primates evolved into humans, people's taste preferences continued to develop based on their geographical location, local nature and available regional products. For instance, the population of present-day Latin American countries prefers spicy dishes, whether in Mexico or Argentina. Nice. Latin American cuisines in general are known for extremely spicy food, with spices even extending to desserts. This fondness for spiciness is attributed by modern scientists to these territories being the homeland of the famous chili pepper. It remains a common ingredient in many recipes and is sometimes even served as a standalone dish. In Eastern countries, various spices and herbs, including aromatic plants and tree bark, are favored for creating diverse flavors. Asian cuisine always incorporates these Eastern spices, giving dishes a unique and sometimes unconventional taste for those from other parts of the world. Oh my God! In cold and harsh northern regions, residents prefer extremely fatty foods to replenish the energy drained by the challenging climate. Substances found in fried or boiled meat help restore their balance. This is how national food preferences evolved over centuries. However, despite living in the same cultural environment, individuals who seemingly should have similar food habits and preferences still have distinct tastes. I mean, it's all right, like… The same dishes can differ. One person might prefer a saltier flavor, while another prefers the opposite. These characteristics of food perception are influenced by the aforementioned genes. But how do genes directly influence our tastes? I'll tell you about it now. For example, scientists in their recent study, titled Genetic and Environmental Influences of Dietary Indices in a UK Female Twin Cohort, explain and prove that love, or conversely, aversion to certain foods, is partly linked to the presence of specific genes in an individual. But before diving into that, let's briefly talk about what genes are for a general understanding. Genes are, so to speak, small segments of DNA molecules, and the exact number in the human body is still unknown, given the current state of medical knowledge. The number of genes can be several tens of thousands, or even more, and this vast number is due to the fact that one gene can have multiple variations, known as alleles. So, there can be numerous alleles defining different versions of specific genes. The results of a recent scientific study indicate that the love for fatty foods in individuals is influenced by a particular variant of the CD36 gene. What? A higher quantity of such genes in the body leads to taste receptors responding more actively to fatty foods compared to individuals with fewer of these genes, resulting in an increased fondness for extremely fatty foods. Interestingly, the CD36 gene can be present not only in our body cells, 
but also on the surface of taste buds on the tongue. This makes it a full-fledged receptor, allowing the taste of fatty foods to be perceived more vividly and intensely. Additionally, CD36 is often a component of the innate immune system. <laughs> yeah, boy. Recently, Norwegian scientists also uncovered why many people cannot tolerate the taste of meat. It might seem that meat intolerance is driven by vegetarian beliefs, cultural or even religious reasons, but no. It's once again related to genes. It is linked to the presence of the OR7D4 gene, and individuals with this gene unfortunately or fortunately cannot consume meat without disgust. Blech. Specifically, pork triggers the most aversion due to the smell of androstenone, a hormone emitted by male pigs during sexual maturation. However, to feel such pronounced aversion to meat products, a considerable amount of a specific variation of the OR74 gene is needed, which is extremely rare in nature. Yet there are still many people with this gene variation, and some of them are vegetarians. Not out of ideology, but because of their inability to tolerate the taste of meat products. People with a high quantity of the TAS2R38 gene prefer saltier food, as mentioned earlier. Scientists claim that an elevated level of this gene does enhance the taste of salt. However, other scientists believe that the increased amount of TAS2R38 indicates not a great love for products with high salt content, but rather that individuals with variations of this gene attempt to mask the bitter taste from the other types of food using salty flavors. For example, broccoli can taste bitter in the mouth when the TAS2R38 gene is present in higher amounts, leading many people to opt for less healthy but more palatable food. Some individuals try to counteract bitterness by consuming something sweet, resulting in specific taste preferences. By the way, I want to share an interesting fact. The gene responsible for perceiving bitterness in broccoli or preferring saltier food is the same gene responsible for the bitter taste in coffee, a bitterness that many people enjoy, with some even considering it noble. There's also an important point regarding broccoli. Dislike for it is not always caused by genes. Often, aversion to broccoli arises in people living in regions with insufficient iodine levels. It's quite simple to explain. Broccoli contains neurotoxins that hinder iodine absorption in the body. In essence, the human body signals that consuming this food is not advisable. After this brief interesting fact, let's return to the main theme of the video and discuss sweets. The perception of sweetness and other fast carbohydrates depends on the mutation of the GLUT2 gene. If its function is disrupted or GLUT2 operates incorrectly in your body, the central nervous system reacts to elevated glucose levels in the blood. And as a result, a person consumes too much sweet food. Furthermore, GLUT2 serves as a transporter not only for glucose but also for fructose. If an individual consumes excessive sweets, it can lead to significant health problems, ranging from tooth decay to more serious conditions such as diabetes. This makes the mutation of this gene, or more precisely, its mutation very dangerous for the human body. And what about sour taste? On this matter, scientists have a theory, though it's worth noting that this study was conducted only on rodents. However, researchers assure us that in humans it works approximately the same way as in rodents. Are you serious? The gene OTOP1 and its various variations are responsible for the sour taste. Mammals with a well-functioning gene and a normal quantity of it sharply react to sour products. In other words, even having variations of this gene in normal amounts may cause, let's say, conditional pain sensations in taste receptors. Oh! Ew! Meaning a normal reaction. Animals lacking OTOP1 or having it work improperly essentially do not sense the sour taste. However, it's essential to mention that sensitivity to sour tastes almost never disappears completely. A mild sour taste can be perceived even when this gene is entirely absent. The complete absence of a specific gene is not uncommon either. With genes covered, I hope I've explained everything simply and clearly. But what about junk food? Have you ever wondered why we prefer unhealthy food, such as pizza or burgers, over healthier options like vegetables or fruits? Everyone knows about the harm of fast food and other processed foods. No. Yet despite this, 
a significant number of people still prefer them. We increasingly purchase less healthy products, opting for, as I mentioned earlier, unhealthy food. Often we even stop cooking and instead buy ready-made meals that only need to be reheated, rather than spending hours at the stove. But why do we do this? Many of us would probably say it's for time savings. And yes, often that's the case. However, there might be a more substantial reason. Such food simply seems tastier to us. Oh my god! Wow! But I'll ask the question again. Why? In reality, there are many reasons why we, including myself, like unhealthy food. And let's talk about them now. The first and perhaps one of the most crucial reasons we love junk food lies in the contrast of textures. Simply put, when a soft filling contrasts with a crunchy crust, our gray matter, that is the brain, perceives the dish as interesting and very attractive. This principle is used in the preparation of pizza or fried pastries, glazed ice cream, chocolate bars and many other not very healthy products. The second reason lies in saliva stimulation. You've probably noticed that when eating a burger, for example, saliva in your mouth is produced more abundantly than when consuming, say, broccoli. This is all due to our brain. Earlier, I mentioned the texture of food, which seems more appealing and interesting to the brain. This triggers a signal, and our salivation becomes stronger. The more saliva is produced when consuming food, the longer it stays in the oral cavity, and the tastier it seems to the brain. Ketchup and other sauces harmful to us operate in this principle, as does ice cream. When a person gets used to eating certain foods exclusively with sauces, the taste of the same product without the sauce is perceived as less delicious. Come on, man! The third and no less important reason lies in disappearing caloric perception. You may object and say, how can the caloric content of unhealthy food disappear, if it's widely known that, on the contrary, less healthy food is much more caloric than healthy food? And you would be right. However, I'm talking about the illusion of disappearing calories. It's quite simple. While eating, say, chips, you've probably noticed that they literally melt in your mouth, unlike, for example, regular boiled potatoes. Due to the fact that chips melt in our mouths, we simply deceive our brains. From this illusion, it seems to us that we have eaten very little, meaning our body does not feel satiated. As a result, we continue to eat and consume more than the body needs, leading to excess weight, which in turn causes problems with the body. The fourth reason is the deception of taste sensitivity. If you consume the same food, such as carrots, for an extended period, the brain stops perceiving it as attractive. Each time you eat it, the brain receives less pleasure unhealthy products are produced in a way that deceives taste sensitivity. The recipe is tailored to keep the stimulation of taste receptors at the same level. For this reason, people can't eat just one candy from the package and stop. Junk food never gets boring. The fifth reason is, of course, the recipe. Manufacturers of various snacks and fast food use countless taste enhancers and other chemical additives. I want to note that taste enhancers are not always bad. Mostly it's just a scary name. There are natural taste enhancers in nature, such as salt and sugar, which are practically harmless when consumed in regulated amounts. However, the situation with manufacturers is somewhat more complicated. They intensify these enhancers and improve them every year. Because of this, unhealthy food seems very tasty to us. The sixth, and perhaps the most important reason, is addiction and past experience analysis. Trying a delicious but unhealthy pizza at least once, and the brain will remember it forever. Every time you see a crispy, fresh pizza, the brain sends a signal, and you'll want to eat a coveted piece of appetizing pizza. The more often you eat it, the more likely you'll develop a dependence on it, and accordingly, the consumption of unhealthy food will only increase. Perhaps these six points are the main reasons why we eat unhealthy food. But how can you stop consuming not-so-healthy food? Refusing unhealthy food is not as difficult as it may seem at first glance. The most important thing in giving it up is the desire. Without it, you won't succeed. But if you do have the desire, let's now talk about how to get rid of unhealthy food. Try not to purchase products with more than five components in their composition. The healthiest natural foods have a simple composition, while unhealthy products consist of dozens of components, most of which are not beneficial. Be attentive when buying groceries. As I mentioned earlier, 
The more often we eat the same food, the more we get tired of it, and it starts to seem tasteless. Unhealthy food doesn't give us that feeling, so try to make your diet as diverse as possible and regularly vary your meals. Different nutritious foods will help you eliminate unhealthy habits. That's all, dear friends. Now you know much more about food. Eat right. Thanks for watching and goodbye.